Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to another episode of Ninjago Retold, the show where I tell the entire story of LEGO Ninjago's over 11-year run in chronological order from the beginning to the end, starting with the pilots and going all the way up to Crystallized. So far in this recap review series, we have taken a look at the prologues all the way to Episode 4 Rebooted, and now we jump things off with Episode 5, Tournament of Elements, covering Season 4 of the TV show. Tournament of Elements was basically what set the standard for future Ninjago seasons, widely expanding the lore and introducing some of the most interesting concepts across all of Ninjago in the form of the fan favorite Elemental Masters. And so what are we waiting for? Let's jump up, kick back, whip around and spin, and roll the intro. Previously on Ninjago Retold, Sacrifice of the Titanium Ninja. As Ninjago City is rebuilt following the Overlord's defeat, the spirit of the Master of Evil manifests itself as the Overlord Computer Virus, infecting technology across the city and building armies of ninja clones to terrorize the people of the realm. As Lloyd's golden power is stolen to create a new physical form for the Overlord, it's up to Zane and the rest of the ninja to fight back against the forces of evil, fighting alongside the Serpentine in the sewers, in the streets, and even in outer space as they faced off against old foes and new villains alike. And in a final confrontation with the Overlord, the courageous Ninja of Ice sacrifices himself to destroy this golden master, saving his friends and the realm. This is Ninjago Retold. You're a long way from finding a ninja in these parts, old man. Lloyd is the green ninja. I am the ultimate spinjitsu master. Support me, friends, for one last time. The new Serpentine War has just begun. My master has arrived. Yes, it's true. The greatest love stories do always end in tragedy. Maybe I'm departed. Control time, control everything. I have no son. I cannot fight you, but I can resist you. Endings will always come. All we can do is fight to make them good ones. Protect those who cannot protect themselves. You were programmed by the game to lose, but you don't have to. I want you to promise me that you will always stand up to those who are cruel. We are the keepers of the amulet. I am. I am the sea. We are one. There will be peace in the dark. Episode 5, Tournament of Elements. Chapter 1, A Team Divided. The realm of Ninjago had once again been cleansed of the darkness of the Overlord, and as civilians gathered in the streets to celebrate the life and sacrifice of Zane, the ninja were devastated by the loss of their friend and brother. Meeting at Chen's Noodle House, a popular fast food joint, the five remaining heroes, Lloyd, Nia, Jay, Kai, and Cole, attempted to share one more meal together. But with tensions running high, Jay and Cole got into a physical fight over Nia, who was disgusted to see things turn so sour after the death of a friend, and rejected both of them. In their anger, the ninja split up, leaving Lloyd and Nia alone to recuperate. Now without a team or purpose, Lloyd found himself assisting Cyrus Ward with odd jobs and repairing broken training systems, still reeling from the loss of Zane and unaware of the whereabouts of the other ninja. As he continued to train aimlessly and no new threats arose, Lloyd began to be more and more disillusioned with the life of a ninja. As for Jay, he made his way to his parents' old junkyard, participating in inventing competitions and tinkering with electronics to keep his mind off of Nia, Cole, and the loss of Zane. In the construction yards of Ninjago City, Kai found employment at the Heart of Seal Foundry, only to be involved in a workplace accident with a careless worker he dubbed Big Guy. 
Following the accident and altercation with this big guy, Kai quit and headed back to Wu's academy, where Nia encouraged him to cool down, advice he took literally by taking a new job at an ice rink. Elsewhere, Cole ventured deep into the Blackwood Forest and found work with a group of lumberjacks who preferred to work in silence and solitude, just as Cole wanted. But with no motivation to continue inventing, Jay spiraled into depression and stayed at home watching TV, where his adoptive father Ed introduced him to his favorite show, Most Ultimate Extreme Ninja Challenge Ever, a reality show hosted by famous news anchor Fred Feinle, rival to reporter Gail Gossip. With nothing else left to do, Jay signed up to participate in the show, winning the crowd's favor and even inadvertently humiliating Fred Feinle, who quit on the spot and had his role taken over as host by Jay, whose natural charisma won over the crowd. Back at the ice rink, Kai managed to get a job as a Zamboni driver, cleaning the rink but inadvertently steering the ring into none other than the big guy's party, prompting the muscle-bound man to challenge Kai to a duel at the underground fight club in Yang's Tavern, to which the Ninja of Fire promptly accepted. At the tavern, Kai was shocked to find Slither Pit matches being held by Serpentine, featuring Lowlife from across the realm. Fighting the big guy, who revealed his name as Big Dan, with the art of the silent fist, Kai managed to subdue his opponent before being challenged by the Hypnobri Zoltar, gaining an appreciation for the simple life of fighting and taking down enemies and adopting the persona of the Red Shogun. And as the ninja split up and pursued their own personal lives, other forces in Ninjago began to plot and scheme, and old enemies from the time of the Serpentine War began to accelerate their plans. Forty years ago, Garmadon's old mentor, Master Chen, and his pupil Klaus had been banished to an uncharted island off the coast of Ninjago for their involvement with the Serpentine during the time of the Serpentine Wars. Over the course of this conflict, Chen had stoked the fires of war between both sides, reminding the Serpentine of the prophecy of the Golden Master and the humans of the legend of the Great Devourer. Even after his banishment, Chen had Klaus, now an accomplished master of dark magic, to use his abilities to manipulate Crux and Acronix, elemental masters of time, into seizing power for themselves, setting off a series of still unresolved events that led to the kidnapping of Rei and Maya, former masters of fire and water, and the breeding of the spawn of the Devourer, the Vermilion Legions, which lurk in the swamps of the Jago City to this day, biding their time. And even in modern times, Chen's tendrils ran deep in Ninjago, and the cunning master had established a food empire all over the island, Chen's noodle shops, which had secretly been used as a money laundering front to fund vast expansions he had made to the island during his nearly 40 years in exile. Over these years, Chen raised his daughter Skyla, who had inherited the power of Amber from her mother, who vanished under mysterious circumstances. Building a vast criminal empire and indoctrinating countless wayward souls into his cult of Anachondra worshippers, Chen used these cultists to be his eyes and ears across Ninjago during his time in exile, learning of the new elemental masters and their whereabouts, and even learning that Rei and Maya were still alive and working with Crux and Acronis. Sending his cultists to raid the Anachondra tomb, which was filled with the skeletons of the dead Serpentine, Chen outfitted his cultists with the desecrated skulls of the fallen Serpentine carving the rest of the bones into elaborate jade blades and crafting a massive serpentine headdress for his own use. At the same time, Chen began to keep a close eye on the ninja's adventures, salvaging scales of the Great Devourer, fighting Captain Soto and stealing the resurrected pirate's peg leg, and even stealing copies of the ninja's own outfits for his glorious trophy room. And all this time, a sinister plot began to brew in Chen's mind. Consulting with Dark Sorcerer Klaus, he discovered a spell that could transform any user with an Anachondrite tattoo into copies of the long-dead race of Serpentine themselves, but only if the caster of the spell had the control of dozens of specific elements, from metal to speed to gravity and smoke, and most importantly, fire, lightning, earth, ice, and the power of the Green Ninja. And so, Chen set out to first claim the element of ice for himself sending his cultists to gather information across the land. Word reached Ten that Jane had survived a sacrifice, and the robotic assistant Pixel was hard at work crafting a new body for Zane's return. Realizing that he needed a skilled thief and mercenary to capture the Ninja of Ice, Chen set out feelers across the land, finally encountering Ronin Cognito, a deadly mercenary and bounty hunter renowned across the underbelly of Ninjago for his skills and daring. 
Despite caring for a wife and daughter, Ronan continued to endlessly work as a ruthless bounty hunter with no limits, for no matter how much money he earned, it was never enough. For years ago, when Ronan was a young man and down on his luck, he found himself drinking his sorrows away at a tavern when he was approached by a mysterious stranger who called himself Sultan Archer who promised him a fresh start and life anew away from the vices of alcohol and his drunken stupor. Promising Ronin a deal that would cost him no coin, the devious entity tricked Ronin into indebting his soul to the cursed realm, and his master, the preeminent physical embodiment of this forsaken world. For Wu's former pupil Mara, master of wind, who had been cursed and bound to the preeminent, had been seeking his revenge against his master, and sending his soul archer under the guise of Sultan was his first step in securing pawns to one day aid against his old master. As Ronin finally stopped wallowing in self-pity, he sobered up and realized the gravity of the deal he had made with the soul archer, knowing he would be bound in eternal servitude to the preeminent should he now pay off his debt. Crafting a special eyepiece to detect paranormal essence which he now wore at all times, Ronin established himself as a force to be reckoned with across Ninjago, his wife and daughter disapproving of his line of work, but understanding that this grave debt had to be paid. And so, Chen's agents approached Ronin with the opportunity of a lifetime, capture and deliver the newly rebuilt Nindroid Zane and his companion Pixel right off the assembly line. Initially refusing to do harm to a hero who'd saved the realm and in turn his family from the Overlord, Chen's cultists moved to threaten Ronin's wife and daughter, forcing the hardened bounty hunter to fulfill his duties. And so, just as Zane's new titanium form was finished at Borg Tower and Pixel prepared to tell the ninja the good news, Ronin ambushed the pair of ninjoids and swiftly brought them to Chen's uncharted island, damaging Zane's memory core in the process and even breaking apart Pixel's body in the brief skirmish. And, with the Ninja of Ice secured, Master Chen had not only gained the first of many elements he needed to complete his dark spell, but he also now had sufficient leverage over Kai, Jay, Cole, and Lloyd to come to the island and fall right into his trap. And as it turned out, Lloyd was already at work reuniting the old team, for after a pep talk from his father Garbodon, he was resolved to reunite the band after their months apart. But little did he know, he was playing directly into Chen's hand. Chapter 2 The Uncharted Island The loss of Zane will either tear you four apart or bring you closer together. The choice is yours. Master Wu's words rung sharply in Lloyd's mind as he sought to recruit his old teammates and reunite the ninja as protectors of the realm. After a training gambit against a group of reprogrammed ninjas who now served as Borg's elite security forces, Lloyd had a chance to briefly speak with Borg and Wu about the whereabouts of the Overlord's golden armor which was hidden away in a secret vault where it would not be used or seen for years. Visiting Kai at Yang's tavern just as the Red Shogun annihilated his opponent, Lloyd spoke with Kai at the bar, who insisted that he should have made the sacrifice. To which, Lloyd replied that one of Kai's greatest pitfalls was always wanting to be the hero, the center of attention, and whether it be as the Green Ninja or with Zane's sacrifice, and reminded the Ninja of Fire to think about others rather than himself. Visiting Cole in the woods, Lloyd found his friend working as a lumberjack, isolated from society and hiding in obscurity, until a falling log threatened to crush a group of workers and Cole leapt into action, revealing himself as the ninja of Earth against his will. Still hurt over his fight with Jay and refusing to be a part of the team of Jay was, Cole initially refused to rejoin Lloyd until this instant was resolved, Lloyd imploring his friend to rejoin them and be a team once more. As Jay's live game show concluded, Lloyd visited him in his dressing room, trying to convince his friend to hear out what he had to say. But Jay stood firm in his distaste for Cole, and lamented the loss of Nia as a partner and friend. Once again asking his friend to reconsider his stance, Lloyd left Jay with his parting words. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Days passed, and Kai found himself lost in his thoughts while looking up at Zane's statue, deep in contemplation over his selfishness and role on the team. Making his way to the place Lloyd asked to meet at, Chen's Noodle House, Kai found himself face to face with Jay, Cole, and who had all agreed to return and hear out the Green Ninja. Gathering his friends, Lloyd proposed that they recruit a new ninja teammate, a proposal that was met with immediate backlash, the others stating that there may not be a team without Zane. But before the argument could progress, the ninja were attacked by a group of thugs, 
Chen's cultists, who distracted the heroes and led them out to the back of the restaurant, where they were greeted by a mysterious scroll, inviting them to a tournament of elements on an uncharted island. But it was not the invitation that stunned the ninja, but the visage of their presumed dead friend, Zane, adorning the letter, which the ninja began to read aloud. Master Chen has personally invited you to participate in his Tournament of Elements. Secrecy is of the utmost importance. Tell no one, or suffer the consequences. If you ever want to see your friend again, meet on the pier at midnight and leave your weapons behind. With that final warning, the letters self-destructed in their hands, and a mystery was afoot for the team to solve. Packing old suits and supplies at Garmadon's monastery, Lloyd was interrupted by his father before heading out to the meeting point at Ninjago City Docks, who grew suspicious of his son's sudden rush to pack and tail the ninja from afar. While Nia worked hard to construct a new version of the Destiny's Bounty, the rest of the ninja departed under the cover of night, making their way to a ferry emblazoned with Chen's Anachondri logo, where they were greeted by Klaus, master of the dark arts and right-hand man to Chen. As Klaus invited the ninja and the assembled strangers onto his ferry, Garmadon emerged from the shadows, warning the ninja that Klaus and Chen were dangerous men, to which Lloyd remarked that finding Zane would be the only way for their team to be whole again. And so, the four ninja embarked on the ferry with Garmadon also forcing his way aboard, much to Klaus's disapproval. On board, Garmadon explained to the ninja that their elemental powers were passed down from their parents, and each stranger aboard the ship was a master of the elements. Marveling at the mysterious powers of the masters around them, Kai, Jay, Cole, and Lloyd came face to face with mysterious strangers from across the realm of Ninjago. Karloff, master of metal. Griffin Turner, master of speed. Jacob Pevsner, master of sound. Camille, master of form. Mr. Pale, master of light. Tox, master of poison. Belobo, Master of Nature, Gravis, Master of Gravity, Nero, Master of Mind, Shade, Master of Shadow, Ash, Master of Smoke, and Skylar, who Garmadon had never met before and was unaware of her element. Explaining that the ninja were led to believe that they were special, Garmadon insinuated that Wu had kept many secrets from them, and this revelation was just the tip of the iceberg. As the ninja mingled with the other elemental masters and learned of their powers and names, the hot-headed Kai got entangled in a fight with Karloff, who had asked Skylar for her cloak. Leaping to the mysterious girl's defense despite her insistence that he let it go, Kai charged at Karloff, only to find that the master of metal was a formidable opponent, and during a brief but intense skirmish on the ferry, Kai found himself overwhelmed by the power of his opponent, until Klaus called off the fight, announcing that they had arrived at their destination. As Skylar helped up Kai from the floor, he was unaware that by mere physical contact, the Master of Amber had temporarily stolen his power, and was planning to use this newfound firepower in the tournament for herself. As the fairy approached the mysterious island, the ninja were greeted with a foreboding fortress emerging from the mist. Strange drums and chanting filled the air as the elemental masters disembarked and headed to the main fortress in the center of the island. And, in the darkness in the catacombs beneath the island, unbeknownst to the ninja, Zane awoke with a start, disoriented and confused, a stranger in his new form. In the center chamber of the island, the elemental masters came face to face with Master Chen, enigmatic, maniacal orchestrator of the Tournament of Elements, who announced the rules and declared the tournament's creed, only one can remain which in turn was the ancient motto of the Anachondri tribe. Just as Pythor had ensured that he was the sole survivor of his tribe after years of banishment, so would the Elemental Masters compete in free-for-alls, one-on-one matches, and deadly gambit to become the last master remaining and gain the glory of winning the Tournament of Elements. Quickly realizing that every fighter was there for a personal reason of their own, whether it be saving a friend, uncovering secrets, or just glory and the thrill of the fight, the ninja only had a few moments to strategize before Chen's kabuki servants ushered each fighter to their rooms, Garmadon being ushered out of the building due to him not being a combatant, but promising to keep a close eye on the ninja. As Kai, Jay, Cole, and Lloyd made their way to their rooms, Kai encountered Skylar, who was housed adjacent to him as a distraction placed by Chen to keep the ambitious ninja of fire close, in the hopes that he would eventually win him over to his side. 
Just then, Chen declared the first round of the tournament had begun. A free-for-all for Jade Blades hidden all around the island, of which there were enough for each fighter, but one. As Skylar tripped Kai into getting her a blade, and Cole, Jay, and Lloyd found themselves in heated fights of their own, Kai was soon one of the last elemental masters without a blade, and he found himself facing off against Karloff once again in a battle of metal and heat, losing to the Metalonian master for a second time. And as Lloyd battled the others for a blade of his own, Dark Sorcerer Klaus interfered, using his dark magic to covertly trap the Green Ninja, until Garmanon disrupted the spell, realizing that the tournament was rigged against the ninja. As Karloff made his way to the chamber to deposit the final blade, Kai played dirty, unscrewing the Metalonian Master's massive metal mitts and seizing the jade blade for himself, blasting over to deposit his prize, and leaving Karloff to be dropped into a bottomless pit to Catacombs Unknown, shocking the Elemental Masters, who now realize the sheer stake of the conflict and what they had to do to win. That night, troubled by Karloff's disappearance, the four ninja met in Kai's room to investigate where Chen had sent the defeated master, and as they scoured the island and split up to cover more ground, searching through waterfalls and hidden passageways, the ninja discovered signs leading to underground catacombs, bottomless pits, and a secret network of spy tunnels connecting all of their rooms, and turned their attention to the enigmatic Skylar, who they were shocked to see use the power of fire, leading Kai to suspect they were related. As the ninja ventured deeper into the catacombs of the island, they finally came upon a group of cultists praying to the spirits of the Anachondrite, sinister chanting filling the air as Chen made his appearance before a captured and bound Karloff. Blasting the Master of Metal with the power of ice emanating from his mysterious staff, Chen then appeared to draw the very element of metal from Karloff, leaving the Metalonian warrior powerless. For Chen's staff was made of chronosteel, the very material Wu and Garmadon had used to steal the powers of the Hands of Time away during their revolt, which now had been perfected into an ornate staff of elements, which could house multiple elements in one weapon, thanks to the mysterious power of special crystals found beneath the island. Shocked at Chen's plot, the ninja were quickly discovered and chased through the tunnels by a mutated bestial anaconda, pet serpent of Dark Sorcerer Klaus. And while they barely managed to escape, Klaus and Chen now knew they were aware of his plot to steal the elements, and accelerated their plans to ensure the ninja would be eliminated as quickly as possible. Chapter 3 Masters of the Elements A furious blizzard raged through mountains unknown. Mysterious roars of creatures unseen shook the ground, and the ninja of ice awoke in an unfamiliar land. Skin now metallic titanium, Zane had been through many trials since rebuilding his body, captured by Ronin, his memory drive damaged, and losing Pixel. Realizing he was dreaming, Zane was abruptly awoken by Pixel's voice calling him from another room, explaining that he was held captive in Chen's dungeon, and she was just in the adjacent cell. All he had to do was remember what his powerful new body could do, remember who he was, and they could both be set free. Back on the mainland of Ninjago, Nia and Wu were unaware of the ninja's disappearance, still working away at constructing a new version of the Destiny's Bounty to serve as a flying headquarters for the ninja. As Misako began to question her husband and the ninja's whereabouts, Nia resolved to search for her missing friends, using a temporary mobile base, the DB Express, to seek them out. On Chen's island, the ninja were still reeling from the revelations of the past night, when Chen announced the next phase of the tournament, one-on-one -on -one matches in different sectors of the island, featuring some of the most powerful masters. Bilobo, Master of Nature vs. Nero, Master of Mind. Turner, Master of Speed vs. Gravis, Master of Gravity. And Kai, Master of Fire vs. Ash, Master of Smoke. As the combatants prepared to duel, fights happened in rapid succession, Griffin Turner racing Gravis up a tree for the Jade Blade, and Nero struggling to break free of Bilobo's vine restraints. As Kai and Ash battled above a bubbling pit of lava, Klaus attempted to use dark magic to sway the match in Ash's favor and ensnare Kai, before being stopped by Chen, who was enjoying the fight and genuinely wanted to see who would win. On the cherry tree tops, Gravis hurled flower petals as deadly projectiles at Turner with incredible speed, only to find that this master of speed could move faster than the eye could see, dodging each projectile and making his way to the Jade Blade, winning the match and sending Gravis plummeting to the catacombs below. 
in the fight between Nura and Belobo, just as the Master of Nature was about to gain the upper hand and claim the Jade Blade with a creeping vine, the Master of Mind induced a splitting headache, crippling Belobo and allowing Nuro to seize the blade, winning the match. And as for Kai and Ash, as the bridge collapsed and burned around them, Ash teleporting and dodging Kai's attacks, the Master of Fire anticipated his moves and swiftly defeated the Master of Smoke, who fell deep within the catacombs of the island. Angered that one of the ninja was allowed to proceed, Klaus pleaded with Chen, begging his master to let him use dark magic to rig the tournament in their favor. But Chen insisted that there are other ways to eliminate the ninja, and the time for Klaus's sorcery would come, and instead pitted Cole and Jay against each other, whose anger over Nia had still never been truly resolved. And with the grand fight between Lightning and Earth set for later that evening, the ninja were running out of time before one of them would be eliminated, and they only had a few hours to convince the other elemental masters of what they had seen. Seeking out Nero, Master of Mind, Lloyd explained that they had witnessed Chen steal Karloff's power, and the maniacal master would be coming for his power soon enough. While Nero initially did not want to side with the ninja in fear that it would hurt his chances in the tournament, he read Lloyd's mind and saw he was telling the truth, and now had much to contemplate. With a plan in place to have Nero read Chen's mind and report Zane's whereabouts to the ninja, Cole and Jay solemnly prepared for their fight, while Lloyd and Kai were helpless to stop the match. Navigating his way to Chen's throne, Nero attempted to read his mind but was blocked by Klaus, who threatened to tell the other elemental masters that he was working with the ninja, who in turn would side against this alliance. As Nero quickly made his way out of the chamber, he managed to steal a glimpse inside Klaus's mind for just an instant, realizing that he needed every single master's powers for a mysterious spell contained in this book of magic, but he couldn't find a way to stop the fight between Jay and Cole. As the two ninja prepared for their duel, night soon fell upon Chen's mysterious island, and the tournament's next bout was about to begin. As the fight began, Jay and Cole lunged at each other, pent up frustrations over Nia running wild as they hurled elemental energy, all while Chen cackled atop his throne. As the Masters of Earth and Lightning continued their battle, Lloyd and Kai were powerless to stop them. And deep within the dungeons below Chen's arena, Zane had managed to unlock more parts of his memory, and as his former life began to piece itself together, he broke free of his chains and made his way to the adjacent cell where he had heard Pixel's voice only to realize that she had been scrapped for spare parts, and all that remained of the Nindroid was her neural drive. With no more physical body, Pixel was stuck as a disembodied voice, but refusing to leave her behind, Zane plugged her mind into his own, saving her essence as a guiding voice in his head, but giving himself away in the process, getting caught by Klaus and Chen's guards, who put him in thicker chains. Back at the arena, Cole and Jay were still locked in a vicious duel, boulder particles rippling through the air as electricity surged through the arena as the two former friends were locked in battle. As Cole managed to gain the upper hand and push Jay to the ground, he came to his senses, realizing that them fighting was exactly what Chen wanted, and the only way to truly win the Tournament of Elements was by banding together in an alliance against Chen's manipulation. In turn, Jay admitted that he blamed himself for what happened with Nia, and was channeling his guilt by antagonizing Cole unjustly. And with the two ninja friends and allies once again, they proclaimed that they would refuse to fight each other, to which Chen sent Kondrai Crusher vehicles into the arena, boxing them in and declaring that either one of them wins, or they both would lose. As Cole apologized for ever pursuing Nia in the first place, he soon realized that one of them did have to lose, and so he tossed the Jade Blade to Jay, surrendering the match and plummeted into the prisons below. And with that, Chen had gained the element of Earth through his Staff of Elements, and Jay was left to carry on in Cole's stead, now more determined than ever to free his friends and win the tournament. Back on Ninjago Island, Nia continued to scour the streets for the ninja to no avail, but to her surprise, Zane's tracking beacon began to flash on an uninhabited island off the coast of Ninjago, and as his falcon soared overhead, she had her first lead on the location of her friends, and the hunt was on. Making her way to a Chen's Noodle House location, last known meeting place of the ninja, Nia spotted a series of delivery trucks making supply runs from the restaurant to locations unknown, and as she disguised the DBX as one of Chen's trucks, the convoys made their way onto a mysterious ferry in the dead of night. Unbeknownst that Dareth had stowed aboard, 
believing it was an authentic noodle truck and demanding to know where his favorite dish, the puffy pot stickers, had gone. And so, Nia and Dareth made their way to a loading dock in New Ninjago City, tailing Chen's convoy as they stowed away on a ferry to his island, unaware of the dangers and injuries ahead. And as the ferry began the long journey to the island, night fell on Chen's land, and the next bout of the tournament began, with Jacob Pevster, Master of Sound, up against Skylar, who was revealed to all to wield the element of Amber, with the power to temporarily absorb the elements of any other master. As Lloyd, Kai, and Jay felt the watchful eyes of the other masters on them, the ninja soon realized that by presenting a united front, they posed a greater threat to the others, which may have caused the rest of the masters to team up against them. As the battle continued and Skylar managed to dispatch Jacob, sending the Master of Sound to the dungeons below, Chen began to manipulate the other masters to resent the ninja, and Garmadon warned his pupils that if they didn't make friends and alliances with the other masters, they would soon be ganged up on and eliminated. Chen declared that because of Jay and Cole's show of alliance and refusal to participate, everybody would be punished, causing the rest of the Elemental Masters to seek to eliminate the ninja as soon as possible. As tensions ran high between the Masters and the ninja, Cole awoke in a prison cell beneath the island, chained with the mysterious Vengestone Rock, ancient mineral which negates Elemental powers. Without his super strength or command over Earth, Cole was put to work in a secret factory beneath Chen's island reconnecting with Karloff, who showed him how to do his job and befriended the ninja of Earth. As the pair encountered Jacob, the elemental master of sound declared that he would attempt to escape at the first chance, only to be caught by Chen's guard and sent to feed Klaus's massive anachondri serpent. All while Cole and Karloff grew closer and began to contact the rest of the now powerless elemental masters. As the sunlight of a new day dawned on Chen's uncharted island, the maniacal master announced the next phase of the tournament, kicking off with a Thunderblade race, roller skating derby where the Green Ninja would face off against Camille, Master of Form, and the rest of the Elemental Masters could either help or hurt the champion they chose. First to cross the finish line with the Jade Blade would win, and soon enough, the Ninja found themselves set up to battle the rest of the remaining Masters, who all sided with Camille, even Nuro and Skylar declaring that they had to choose the winning side. In a flash, the race was on, Kai and Skylar dueling as the Master of Amber tried to convince him to let Lloyd lose, which would be an advantage to him in the tournament, all while Lloyd raced to desperately beat the shape-shifting Master of Form, tricked by her many shapes as she imitated the ninja to get ahead. As Kai helped Lloyd and the ninja catch up, Skylar was disappointed in his lack of self-preservation, to which Kai replied that ninjas stick together, and no matter what happened, the three of them were in this together. In the final moments of the race, Nuro switched sides and decided to help the ninja, stalling talks as she released a poison cloud, just as Chen ordered Klaus to stop the green ninja with his black magic, only to be caught and stalled by Garmin. As the race concluded, Lloyd won in a surprise twist, claiming victory over Camille, and as Chen fumed and tried to banish him anyway, the rest of the elemental masters stood up to Chen. Mr. Pale, Nuro, and the rest of the ninja declaring that if Lloyd was out unfairly, they refused to participate any further, even Skylar warning her father that if everyone quit, there would be no more tournament. And so, as the beginnings of a new elemental alliance began to take shape, Cole managed to encounter Zane in the dungeons while Karloff distracted the guards, with the ninja of Earth overjoyed to see his friend alive and promising to free him as soon as he could. With Camille joining the rest of the imprisoned, powerless Elemental Masters, a plan began to take shape to free everyone held captive by Chen and liberate the dungeons, and Cole began leading an alliance of his own. Chapter 4 A New Alliance On the shores of Chen's island, Nia and Dareth made landfall in their disguised ninja DBX, Nia sneaking in as one of Chen's kabuki servants to blend in with the inhabitants of the island and find out where the ninja had gone. And deep in the dungeons below the arenas, Cole plotted to inform his friends that Zane was alive and a breakout would happen soon, sneaking a secret message for the ninja into a fortune cookie just before promising Karloff to come back and rescue them if Cole were to succeed in this plot. And in the Grand Amphitheater, Master Chen held a glorious banquet for the eight remaining Elemental Masters, Kai, Jay, Lloyd, Shade, Nuro, Skylar, Griffin Turner, and Mr. Pale. With talks eliminated in a bout with the Master of Shadow, only these eight fighters remained, 
and there was a brief moment of respite before the next rounds of the tournament began. With the ninja now allied with most of the Elemental Masters, Lloyd secretly revealed to the fighters that the tournament was all a sham, and the real goal was to steal everyone's elemental powers, which they had personally witnessed happen to Karloff, and Nuro had uncovered by reading Klaus's mind. But the devious Chen had other plans, and in a bid to destabilize this already shaky alliance, he announced that he knew of what they were plotting, and admitted that his staff of elements was being used to steal the powers of the fallen masters. But the winner of the tournament would be given the staff, allowing them to be the true master of all the elements. As Griffin accused Lloyd of just wanting the staff for himself, and Kai began to suspect Shade for revealing their alliance to Chen, Nia arrived in Kabuki gear, informing Jay that she had snuck onto the island, and she would do what she could to gather more information from the inside. At the same time, Cole's fortune cookie message was intercepted by Skylar, who brought the news of Zane's survival to the ninja, who were unaware that as the secret daughter of Chen, she was the spy in the Alliance. As Dareth piloted the disguised DBX into hidden passageways, communicating with Nia from afar, the brown ninja was ambushed and caught by Chen's guards, who now knew an ally of the ninja had snuck onto the island. Back at the noodle factory, Cole initiated his plan. Causing a major distraction by eating the food himself and leading the guards on a chase, he managed to swipe the keys to their cuffs, later freeing Zane, who had once again been trapped in a vision of his titanium dragon of ice, ensnared in a whirlpool of ice and snow, while the roars of the terrifying dragon echoed before him. As the pair of ninja made their escape, Nia had been caught in her own skirmish above the surface, managing to steal the crucial transformation page out of Klaus's spellbook, but tangling with the dark sorcerer in the process, the two battling across rooftops as night fell on the compound. And in Kai's quarters, all eight remaining elemental masters gathered to root out the spy and the alliance, Garmadon revealing that every servant of Chen was tattooed with the markings of the Anaconda and the spy would surely be branded with the same. But as tensions grew high, Shade refused to prove his loyalty, stating that he wasn't the spy nor their ally, and he would do everything in his power to win the tournament and seize the staff for himself. As the Master of Shadow escaped, the rest of the masters were certain that he was the spy, for Skylar had used the stolen power of form to shapeshift her back, concealing her true allegiances. Rain fell outside the compound, as Nia and Klaus continued their furious battle, fists hurling at each other as Nia desperately struggled to escape with the spellbook, for she had learned of Chen's master plan to steal all the elements and use them to complete his dark anachondrite transformation ritual. Managing to break free of Klaus's grasp, Nia fled to the forest, and now had no way to contact the rest of the ninja. At the same time, Zane and Cole found themselves pursued by Klaus's massive pet serpent, mutant Anachondri from the time of the Serpentine War slithering through tunnels and passageways as it routed the two ninja back to the factory, who had a moment to escape, but chose to remain to free the rest of the masters. And in the solitude of Chen's inner chambers, his daughter Skylar reported that the ninja trusted her and she was truly a part of their alliance. But resentment against Chen and his tournament was brewing, and they had to act fast to secure their elemental powers before the masters banded together in a true alliance. Acting fast, Chen arranged a final showdown elimination round for the next day, rounding up the eight masters and Garmadon into a massive blimp to parachute down onto different parts of the island, each fighter unaware that this final round was rigged to cause them all to lose. As the Elemental Masters bickered and grew suspicious of each other on the blimp, Garmadon explained to Lloyd that within each Elemental Master was the power to summon a metaphysical dragon, embodiment of their elements. Just as long as they conquered the fear within themselves and faced what was holding them back, just as Lloyd had summoned a golden dragon with the power of the first Minjutsu Master, he could now summon a green energy dragon. And this ability would be needed soon, for Chen sent the contestants plummeting to the ground with only eight parachutes, but nine of them. And even though Garbanon tried to sacrifice himself to save his son, Lloyd forced the parachute onto his father, managing to summon the power of his dragon at the last second to save himself, and bring them both safely to the ground. As the rest of the Elemental Masters parachuted down to the island, Nia attempted to secretly signal her friends with the Samurai X emblem carved onto trees, 
but the ninja were each facing their own trials, as, one by one, the elemental masters were getting picked off by hordes of anachondri cultists and Klaus, who had been sent throughout the island to capture them and bring them to Chen. Retrieving gifts of mechs, tools, weapons, and gadgets around the island, each fighter was unaware that these very tools were being used to track their every move, and Chen was closer than ever to achieving his goals. And as they made their way through the thick jungle, Garminon and Lloyd talked about the past, with the old warlord telling his son about his training under Chen, rivalry with Klaus, and the start of the Serpentine Wars, which had been incited by Chen in a bid for power. Warning his son of the extreme power of the Anachondra, who had been killed off by Pythor years ago but now stood to threaten Ninjago yet again, Garminon revealed the history and exploits of the Serpentine Wars, and how Chen, Klaus, and his followers were banished to this very island, right after Garminon himself banished the Anachondri generals to the Cursed Realm. As Garminon admitted that he had intercepted Wu's love letter for Misako and claimed it as his own, Lloyd urged him to one day tell the truth to his brother and his wife, for this deception could cause an irreparable rift between them. Elsewhere in the forest, Shane was captured by Klaus, who announced that only one would remain, and it would be Chen. Turning his attention to Jay, the Dark Sorcerer engaged the Master of Lightning in an epic battle, summoning a colossal Titan of Stone to combat Jay's new lightning mech in a ferocious duel, all while Skylar manipulated Kai into following her, only to mess up and accidentally use Zane's power of ice, to which Kai quickly realized that she had been tricking them the entire time. As a fight erupted between the Masters of Fire and Amber, Chen himself stepped in to capture Kai with the element of nature, and, at the same time, Klaus managed to subdue Jay, leaving only Lloyd and Garminon left free. Back in the dungeons beneath the island, Cole and Zane snuck back into the factory, the latter disguising himself with Flower as the two ninja discussed their plan to escape, and free not only the imprisoned workers and elemental masters, but Dareth as well, who had been captured the prior day. Just then, Karloff had an idea. He was an aeronautical engineer back in his homeland of Melonia, and he knew just how to construct a massive rotojet, and, despite Cole's complaints that a jet would be useless underground, the rest of the masters set off to gather parts and secretly construct a weapon of destruction while imprisoned by the cultists. And as Chen prepared to steal the elements of light, shadow, speed, mind, lightning, and fire, Nia caught up with Lloyd and Garminon, revealing that Chen's plan involved a transformation spell to turn all those marked with the Anaconda tattoo into the famed deadly serpents of old, and the next Serpentine War was on the verge of beginning. Chapter 5 Day of the Dragon In the darkness of Chen's Anaconda Temple, the ritual to steal the powers of the captured masters began. Chen cackling maniacally as he gained six new powers to his arsenal, sending all to the factories to work, while sparing Kai at the request of Skylar, who was convinced that he could still be turned to their side. And in the factory, Jay had an emotional reunion with Cole and Zane. Before the beleaguered elemental masters were briefed on Cole's plans to escape, each helping build individual components of Karloff's roto jet. At the same time, Kai had been taken under Master Chen's wing, the conniving manipulator showing off his trophy collection, all while Kai swore that if Chen didn't have his staff of elements, he would be struck down in an instant. Just then, Chen revealed that he knew secrets, dark secrets, surrounding Rei and Maya, the old elemental masters of fire and water, and parents of Kai and Nia. For it was Chen who planted the idea to seize power in the minds of Crux and the Chronix, leading them to the vermilion spawn of the Great Devourer, and manipulating them from afar to kidnap Rei and Maya, and force them to toil in the vermilion swamps, where they were held to this day. But while Chen's offer of information was tempting, Kai remained steadfast in his friends, instead pretending to submit to Chen as a double agent to secretly help the ninja from within. And as night fell on the island, Lloyd, Garminon, and Nia made their move, Nia in her Samurai X persona holding off the cultist guards while Garminon battled Klaus one-on-one, -on -one, leaving only Lloyd to venture deeper into Chen's labyrinth. Encountering Kai, who needed to gain Chen's trust, Lloyd found himself tricked and thrown into the central arena, facing off against Master Chen, now commander of almost all of the active elements. Using speed to dodge Lloyd's attacks and hurling bolts of fire at the green ninja, 
Chen wielded dozens of elements in this final battle in the tournament. And despite the power of the Green Ninja, Lloyd found himself unable to defeat Chen in his powered form, energy beams bouncing off Chen's metallic skin, and the very room's gravity inverting as Chen soundly defeated the Green Ninja. And just as quickly as the fight began, it was over. Lloyd dragged off to dungeons unknown, and Garmadon and Nia chained to the feeding pit of Klaus's great serpent. In the chamber, Garmadon threatened Skylar, refusing to let her go unless he and Nia were released. But much to Skylar's dismay, Chen nonchalantly refused to save her, leaving Garmadon with no choice but to set her free, but planting seeds of doubt in Skylar's mind as to whether or not she was on the right side. Seizing this opportunity, Kai took Skylar aside and begged her to reconsider her allegiances, revealing a plan to steal Chen's staff and asking for her help. And back in the factory, Karloff's rotojet was finally completed, Cole leaping in to launch their daring escape. Rocketing through the tunnels and blasting through waves of cultists, Cole and the rest of the Elemental Masters began making their way to Chen's inner Anachondrite temple, where the final ceremony was about to take place. As Skylar offered her power of amber to her father, Lloyd's green power was also stripped away, funneled into the mysterious Chronosteel Staff of Elements. And with that, Chen's goal was complete. He had become master of the elements, and could now use them to complete the dark ritual to transform himself and his men to Serpentine. Back in the feeding pit of the mutant serpent, Garmadon and Nia were about to be devoured as Cole's jet came crashing through the wall, crushing that great beast with falling rocks and killing it instantly. As Nia and Zane reunited, Cole and Karloff cheered, overjoyed that they had escaped, and the group made their way to confront Shen and take back their powers. In the amphitheater of the temple, Skylar finally made her decision. Kicking the staff out of her father's hands, she chose to side with the ninja and left Kai to claim the staff for himself, freeing Lloyd and temporarily freezing Klaus with Zane's power of ice. As Lloyd begged his teammate to destroy the staff, Kai was overcome by its tempting energy in a brief moment of weakness, having finally gained the power of the green ninja. But as Cole and the others burst through the wall and confronted Chen and his army, Kai was shaken out of his daze and smashed the staff, sending all the elements back to their hosts, and an all-out battle began of Elemental Masters versus Cultists. In the ensuing chaos, Chen and Klaus managed to retreat with a small contingent of Anacondri generals, capturing Skylar in the process, but leaving the rest of the Cultists to be captured and rounded up by the ninja and their new allies. And with the Elemental Masters now in control of the island, the heroes were determined to find the remaining cultists and rescue Skylar. And, at last, the ninja were reunited with Zane. With the island now under their control, Jay directed Bilobo to sink all of Chen's fairies and down the blimp, Nia contacting Wu and Misako, who informed them that the new and improved Destiny's bounty was almost ready, and they would use it to bring them all home. In the meantime, the Elemental Masters scoured the island for Chen, Klaus, and the imprisoned Skylar, who were holed up behind a far-off waterfall in the mountains. As Klaus mourned the loss of his serpent and fumed over Chen's lack of caring, the conniving Chen soon realized that even though his staff was destroyed, the power of the Elemental Master still lived on in his daughter Skylar, and all they needed was to take her to the crystal caves where he had made the staff of Chronosteel to siphon all of Skylar's power potentially killing her in the process. And as Chen and Klaus debated over their next moves, Skylar seized the opportunity to flee, commandeering a hoverboard while Chen's remaining forces pursued her in their blade copters. Back on the coast, Nero received a telepathic message from Skylar warning them of the impending attack, and the Alliance of Elemental Masters mobilized to save Skylar and take down the remnants of Chen's army once and for all. Racing through the jungle, the ninja headed towards an abandoned village to reconvene with Skylar, but Zane, preoccupied with thoughts of his identity and purpose, lost focus and crashed his buggy in a crevice, bidding the rest of the team to go on without him while he worked to free himself. And in the village, Skylar used all her elements at her disposal to throw Chen's men off her scent, firing bursts of smoke and using the power of form to disguise herself, desperately struggling to get back to the ninja right as Kai burst onto the scene, and the two heroes fled on hoverboards as Chen's copter soared overhead. Meanwhile, in the skies above the island, Cole rocketed through the air in his roto jet, Garmadon in tow as they pursued Klaus in the blade copter, Dark Sorcerer leaping from his vessel to damage the roto jet and send it plummeting to the ground while Garmadon climbed onto the very wing of the jet to battle his old rival in the air. 
As the Rotogen went down and Garbodon and Klaus found themselves continuing their pitched battle as they fell through the air, the two masters crashed in a jungle clearing, Klaus promising to banish Garbodon to the Cursed Realm, homeworld of banished souls across Ninjago, and resting place of Morrow and his ghostly army. As the old pupils of Chen continued their fight, Kai and Skylar fled on hoverboards, barely outmaneuvering Chen's cultists and fleeing the scene. But just as they thought they were home free, they were ambushed by two of Chen's guards, suppressing their powers with a vengestone net and capturing the pair of masters to bring them before Chen himself. As Klaus recited an incantation to rip open the celestial divide and summon a portal directly to the realm of the preeminent, Garmadon found himself getting slowly sucked in, taunted by that dark magician who took his title as Lord Klaus. But just as all seemed lost, Garmadon managed to gain the upper hand, tricking Klaus as the sorcerer boasted and laughed, and sending the dark wizard into the rift once and for all. Back in the crevice, Zane was terrified to see visions of his titanium dragon before him, pixel baffled by this fear as she perceived nothing through his sensors, and it was all in his head. Collapsing to the ground, Zane began to question his identity. If he had been destroyed by the Overlord, was he truly still Zane? As Pixel talked him through his fears and anxieties over his death and resurrection, Zane realized he was truly no longer his past self. The White Ninja was dead, but he was now the Titanium Ninja, something new and different, yet at his core, still his old self. Elemental powers levels skyrocketing with his inner fear overcome, Zane began to radiate icy energy all around him, summoning his powerful elemental dragon for the first time. But in the crystal caves below the island, Chen was hard at work completing the transformation spell. Siphoning the stolen elements from a chain Skylar, Chen managed to finally complete the dark ritual, skin turning a scaly purple as a massive tail sprouted from his torso. And every warrior on the island marked with this anachondri tattoo, including Garmadon and Skylar, began to slowly undergo a dark metamorphosis. As Chen, Garmadon, Skylar, and the captured cultists began to transform into full-blooded anachondri, the elemental masters found themselves overwhelmed by the sheer might of the serpents, who, after beating back the alliance of fighters, seized their blade copters and left the island on a direct course for the mainland of Ninjago, preparing to terrorize the realm like in the days of old. As Chen and his army soared across the ocean, the elemental masters were battered, defeated, and helpless to stop them, until a deafening roar echoed through the island. And, in the distance, Zane appeared on his majestic Dragon of Ice, rallying the Elemental Masters to find a deeper power within themselves, and manifest their elements in physical dragon form. And while it took days for each Master to perfect this powerful new ability, the Alliance soon found himself equipped with 15 Elemental Dragons of their own, and the truly united Alliance took off from the shore of the island to challenge Chen, who had kick-started a new age of Serpentine Terror. Chapter 6 The New Serpentine War The race was on to stop Chen's new army of false anachondra, elemental masters descending upon Ninjago City just as Skylar realized that her serpentine hand was slowly turning back to normal, and something had gone wrong with Chen's spell. And in Chen's hideout, he realized the same, and was infuriated that there was an extra step to the spell that he had not realized. The essence of a true anachondra is required to complete it. Delaying his plans to attack the realm until he knew the transformation would be permanent, Chen set off to Cryptarium Prison, Supermax holding facility of Ninjago's greatest villains, to seize the Shrunken Pythor and Bottle of Sweat to complete their transformation. Leading the others onward, Lloyd arrived at Nia's Samurai X Cave with the rest of the Elemental Masters in tow, Garmadon reuniting with his wife and Wu embracing his pupil Zane. With the rest of the masters on standby until Chen struck, the ninja themselves ventured out to Cryptarium Prison to question Pythor as to how to defeat the Anaconda, unaware that Chen's forces had that same objective in mind. As they met with the Warden, the ninja ventured to Pythor's cell, finding the once mighty Anaconda still shrunken and humiliated, who only agreed to help them to defeat the Anaconda imposters, whose transformation was an insult to Pythor's race. But as Chen's pseudo anachondra used their invisibility powers to sneak into the prison and seize Pythor, a fight was on to secure the shrunken villain, Garmadon realizing that his essence would make their transformation permanent, and time was running out to stall the start of the new war. 
In the skirmish that followed between the ninja and the false serpentine, Pythor revealed that Chan had tricked the serpentine and the first elemental masters into fighting each other, and history was about to repeat itself. As the Anacondri copters and battle mechs held siege of the prison, all the inmates were released, from Soto's pirate gang, to imprisoned Skulkin, faulty ninjroids, and even the giant stone warrior. Chaos ensued as all-out brawls broke out all around the prison, and despite their efforts, the ninja lost Pythor in the process, Chen cackling as he made his army's permanent anachondra, and wasting no time to send out convoys of noodle trucks into the desert. But the elemental masters were ready. Standing firm as a new alliance for the first time in 40 years, Shade rallied his comrades as the ninja joined the masters to make a last stand, only to see Chen's noodle truck split up forcing the Masters and the Ninja to spread out across Ninjago, dividing their forces in one-on-one -on -one pursuits. As Nia readied the new Destiny's Bounty for battle and the fighters split up to pursue the trucks, Garmadon attempted to build up the courage to tell Misako about his false love letter from years ago, but couldn't bring himself to admit this shameful truth. As Chen and his armies departed from their camp, Pythor was left behind to fend for himself, terrorized by a swamp rat all while the Elemental Masters pursued each truck from all across Ninjago, from the Desert of Doom to the icy mountain peaks. As they flew further and further, pursuing each truck which presumably held legions of Anaconda, Skylar began to realize a terrible truth. The trucks were simply a diversion by Chen to spread their forces thin and leave the rest of Ninjago defenseless. And, sure enough, as each truck was eventually stopped by the Elemental Masters, the heroes were horrified to find out they were all empty. Thousands of civilians were in danger because of their rash pursuits, and the greatest fear of all was upon them, for Chen's army of Anaconda had just begun a new Serpentine War. Assaulting Jamanakai village like the days of old, the pseudo Anaconda conquered the strategic mountainside dwelling, Chen declaring that he would not stop until every village was fallen. Taunting the heroes after seizing the city's airwaves, Chen made his intentions to seize all of Ninjago clear, and casually mentioned that Garmadon had claimed Wu's love letter as his own years ago on live television, in a bid to turn the two masters against each other, infuriating Wu while Skylar tried to keep the peace. Back in Chen's old camp, Pythor managed to wrangle the Swamp Rat and steal Klaus's old book of spells, racing towards the ninja to devise a way to defeat the false serpents. As Nero sent secret mental messages to each elemental master to coordinate a meeting point, the Alliance made plans to stop Chen and stall his conquest, for the Anacondri had already conquered the entire east coast of Ninjago in the matter of days. As the elemental masters journeyed across Ninjago City to rally the help of Cryptarium inmates, Serpentine, and even regular civilians alike to make one final stand to defend their freedom, the Alliance made their way to the Corridor of Elders, narrow canyon which Chen's armies would be forced to pass through to get to the city. And so, in the hollowed archways of the Sacred Corridor, one final stand began with the Elemental Masters, civilians of Ninjago, and fighters from across the realm holding the line against Chen's new Anaconda warriors who surged across the gap and battled the heroes. Soaring in on the new Destiny's Bounty, Nia, Wu, Garmadon, and Misako joined the fight, Misako reassuring Garmadon in her love for him, and Wu making amends with his brother, refusing to play into Chen's manipulations. And having escaped Chen's camp, Pythor rode the Swamp Rat into battle, convening with Lloyd and explaining a plan to open the Cursed Realm and free the ghostly spirits of the Cursed and the Contra. For inside Klaus's book, a spell detailed a ritual to replace the Cursed Souls with the being who would imprison them in the realm. In this case, Garmadon, after so many years ago. Realizing that the only way to stop Chen's army was to sacrifice himself, Garmadon was resigned to his fate, but Lloyd refused to accept it, having just gotten his father back fully cleansed of evil. And, in an outburst of anger and grief, Lloyd leapt off the bounty, fighting in a frenzy of energy and light. All while the best memories of his father flooded his mind, and he slowly came to terms with what had to be done. On the bounty, Wu began the incantation to banish Garmadon to the Cursed Realm and in turn free the imprisoned ghosts of the Anaconda generals of all. Telling his family to pass on an apology to Lloyd, Garmadon was fully prepared to pass on to the Realm of the Damned, until Lloyd appeared back on the bounty, having accepted his father's sacrifice and grateful for the time they had together, however short. Feeling it was fitting to complete the spell himself, Lloyd completed the ritual, 
sending Garmadon to the Cursed Realm in a noble sacrifice while opening the rift long enough for the generals to materialize in ghostly form. As Garmadon faded into the rift above, he stated that he had always wanted to remake the world in his own image, and only just came to realize that he already had it in Lord. And so, hurtling down from the portal in the sky, General Arcturus, ancient leader of the Anachondri tribe, led his ghostly warriors to sweep across the false Anaconda. Encountering Chen on the battlefield, Arcturus ignored his pleas and calls for allegiance, sending the devious warlord up to the Cursed Realm, and ending the threat of the false Anaconda once and for all. With the war over, Lloyd was left distraught from the loss of his father, with Pythor being congratulated by the ghost of Arcturus, who restored the Serpentine to his normal size. As Arcturus and the rest of the generals faded away to the departed realm, finally freed from their limbo in the preeminent, the elemental masters agreed to keep in touch as they went their separate ways, promising to unite once again should Ninjago ever be in great peril. As the allies cleaned up the Corridor of Elders, a statue of Garmadon was erected, honoring the heroic sacrifice of the once evil villain, and the ninja united to burn Klaus's Book of Spells and commemorate the life of Master Garmadon. With the battle over, peace fell once again upon Ninjago. But the ninja were unaware that by opening the Cursed Realm, they had unwittingly provided a means for other dark spirits inside the realm to escape to Ninjago. And Morrow, Master of Wind, had managed to break free after years of imprisonment, his cursed soul now roaming across the land of Ninjago. And with this new ghostly threat on the horizon, Thus ends Episode 5 of Ninjago Retold, Tournament of Elements. Stay tuned for Episode 6, Possession. Alright, and with that, we have summed up this latest episode of Ninjago Retold. Thank you all so much for watching this series, and I really do appreciate the support of this very long and time-consuming effort. Of course, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about the timeline or concerns. I definitely want to be able to answer as many questions as possible, so I will be checking the comments in case anyone is confused. Now, I also want to know, what do you think of the particular topics covered in this video? Did you like the season or the special that it covered? What do you think of the storyline and media? And what are your favorite parts of what we just covered? With that, we've summed up this massive video, and thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, be sure to stay tuned every two weeks for a brand new Ninjago Retold video coming very, very soon. Thanks so much, and bye for now.